what do you think was the biggest area of growth in you from um a, a lot now? like a lot like i i don't even like i just know my worth now like as a woman i just you know i just present myself differently i carry myself differently you know i don't even have the eager i used to want to be on the internet like i used to think just like being half naked was just the, like it mm. you know would get you know what i mean now i just like dressing up fully clothed and still feel beautiful. I have the confidence and still, you know, embracing my beauty and still be sexy at the same time and still be a mom all at once. Mm. So And you and you thought at one point it was just like, man, I just got to do I like that's, I, I mean, that's all I knew, you know, like where I came from or what I used my past, like that's how I made my money. Mm. That's It was like survive, like, you know. So showing my body was part of how I made my money. Mm. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Let's get it popping, man. You know what time it is? Your boy, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. We here. Special guest is in the building. Um, this young lady uh, needs no introduction, but we're going to give her the best introduction. Um, I mean, entrepreneur, uh, personality. Um, she's not new to the cameras or anything like that, but um, I don't want to rewrite your story because the story has already been written, and I feel like you are continuing to write your story. I was going to say, like, you're in a new place where you're rewriting your story when that's not true. You're just writing another ch a chapter of the book. Um, Alexa Skye's in the building. How you feeling? Great. How are you? I'm all right, man. We were talking about, uh, before we jump into the interview, you were mm -hmm. saying, like, am I ready for marriage? Mm -hmm. And I was like, can you ever be ready for marriage? I don't know. You don't know? That's a good question. I'm sorry, y'all, if y'all heard that. But blame my um, engineer, Kyron. I don't think anybody's ever really um, ready. I think we all want that, and those are our desires. But I don't think anybody's really, like, ready. Mm. But you just look, like, really young, so I was like, wow. Like, when you said my fiancé, like, you don't really hear that from young black men nowadays. Like, you know. They be trying to hide them. Why not? Especially when it's a beautiful lady in that face. Why not? It's like she I mean she in the house. She don't know what's going on. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah. I feel like it's a certain type of man. You know what I'm saying? I feel like it's a certain caliber of a man. Like nah, I ain't. You know what I'm saying like yeah. I don't got to hide. She yeah. she out and open. She right there on the page. Click right there. Boom. Okay. Uh, what about you though? I said I feel like you probably thought she was ready in every relationship. She's like no. No, absolutely not. Why not? Maybe about one. I thought you know. Cause I was never ready to be like I was having fun, mm. but now I think that you know I would be open to it. Speaking but it, it would have to be like somebody that's my best friend because you know commitment is big, and you know being with one person forever is big. So, and but I would assume it's not hard. It just it has to be the right person, your best friend. That's you know? true. <laughs> and you gotta really get to, like get to know who the person is. So that was probably like one of my problems. Like I really never really got to know my past situation because like you know you gotta be like can i be with this person for the rest of my life right you know? when you say um it got it like when you say marriage right what do you seem what does marriage look like to you just curious picking your brain um i think it looks like one like you become one everything is one you know mm. you build together you grow together you're supposed to you know be each other's backbone I don't feel like a woman should, the man, I feel like the man should be the backbone, but I also feel like the woman should also be there as well, you know? I'm not, I'm In gonna, many other ways. I want to change my answer. I think I am ready for marriage. I'm going to tell you why. I feel like I came to the the understanding or the realization that everything I thought marriage was going to be is not. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think when I came to that realization, that's, that's when I just told my fiance this, when I really learned to love her because everything I thought should be marriage, everything I thought was like my soulmate is like, is that, but it's so much more. Right. Right. I remember at a time when I was young, I thought like 
when I stop cheating, I will have the best relationship. And it was like, damn, that's just like entry level of relationship. Like I thought like that was the relationship when it's not. Right. But yeah, man. Um, so you're ready. Yeah, yeah. But good. I think you are too though. I think so too. You know it's funny talking about relationships. I mean, um, you said on one podcast that you ne- like you never got the love reciprocated back. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. But except for one. But you ain't want to talk about that one. No, I still won't. And I'm curious, you don't have to say the name, but I'm why why is that is that something that like when you think back, you still have feelings and something that you haven't gotten over yet? Why is that um, something that you don't want to be addressed really, you know? We just leave things where they are at, you know. But if that's the one that you care for, yeah, it, I mean, I still, I still, you know, have love. Doesn't mean, you know, but I don't want to bring light to the situation. Mm. You know? Even without speaking on a person. Yeah, it just really doesn't need to be brought up. Mm. So I'm just learning in life. Some things are just, you know, better left unsaid. No hard feelings, you know. But, Explain to me why. You know, like what you put out. You know, I don't want people in my business like that. Hmm. Well, I'm really protective of my energy right now in life. So, you know, it's funny. Um, I was just reading this book and they was talking about. But like, the, wait, hold on, not to cut you. Off. I, what did I say in the um, interview? That no, you were just saying like you don't think I um, did love one person or that person gave that love back to me. Yeah, yeah. You were just saying basically how um you, and I can show you the name of the interview. It was like a like a month or two ago. Uh, Ask just talk. Y'all can talk. It's no, fine. No, no. But fine. I'm, what interview? I tell you, it's okay. I got receipts. It's okay. Cause I just I was like. Hold up, cause yeah, I got <laughs> receipts. It's, it's, the wrong person's name no, it's okay. <laughs> you didn't say the name, but that's why that's what that's what made it stand out to me because you was like you never you never got your love reciprocated back except for one relationship, and you was like you kind of like just shut it down like because he was like who he was like I don't want to talk about it at all, and I'm like I'm just curious of why you didn't want to discuss it. What I mean, cause I was. Let's see. What? What's up? Talk. Y'all good. It's fine. It's like, we ain't on Oprah. Like, relax. Like, have fun, man. Live a little. Like, oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. That's why I'm just see. being careful what I say. <laughs> but don't. Don't be careful. It's, um, it was this interview. Uh, he doesn't say his name, but it says Truth Is Studios. You can check it out. Oh, I had a feeling. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was in his building? Oh, that's pretty cool. What are the yeah. odds? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but again, not okay. not not, yeah. not not speaking on a person and an, I don't oh, even know okay. names. Like, right? Yeah, I mean, no. I was speaking about my ex. That was with my ex. And that again, was, I still... That was oh. with, yeah, that's somebody I was with for, for like four years, four and a okay. half years. So that was my like first love. And that's the only one you but felt... But I, I think I did say his name. They probably edited it out. Like, I think I definitely said his name. Maybe I yeah. didn't get to the end. Yeah. But at that part, you was like, nah, you don't want to talk about it. You yeah, I just like, didn't want to get too deep into it yeah why is that but again outside of the name and the person right Mm -hmm. why is that the first thing that comes to your mom just picking your brains understanding like was that something that you were chasing at a time and you felt like you never you never got closure or like what made you i don't think we ever got closure with that situation um you know that was my first love Mm -hmm. let me just put it that way that was my first everything and um that was my longest relationship Mm that's the longest i've been with somebody you know and i think it affected previous or past things you know so well, things I mean, going forward after yeah. that relationship mm-hmm. mm. do you think it was because you was chasing that that love because you never that was your first time getting it mm, i definitely was chasing the love i think he was in just like in a space where you know fame just had came and it was just a lot and i'm not saying he didn't love me because mm-hmm. i know he did but it's just we both were young you know we were young mm. so i don't know if we we did i don't think we really knew what love was at that age you mm. know so i think um Maybe, like, if it was just a different timing, you know. Mm. Yeah. When you look back on those times or the times that you have loved, right, not getting stuck on, like, one particular person or thing, but just looking at the growth in it, right, what what do you think you've grown to learn love actually is? I don't, to be honest, I don't think I've ever really, like, had real love besides that one situation. Mm. And I knew he loved me. And then I, like, I, can, I don't really want to get into details, but... There was particular, like, situations that I was in, and he changed my life, you know what I'm saying? So I knew that he loved me no matter what or who I was. But, like I said, after those situations, I think it was more so, like, lust, Mm. feelings. I don't think I really experienced love after that, ever. And me, I'm, like, a lover girl. So me, I think, like, oh, I love him. And then 
two weeks left. It's, it's a can- you're a cancer, right? I'm a cancer. So I like naturally am like a nurture. I love people. Like I love my friends. I love, you know, I'm very protective. I'm very like possessive over what I like and what I want, but I don't get the, you know. Reciprocation. Yeah. But we're, that's just how cancer people are. Uh, part, part of me is mad that you said the name because I want to talk about the love. And like as a man, like, or whatever, but speaking specifically about the love, right? Mm-hmm. One thing you said that I thought was interesting, especially amongst the black culture, is a particular person changing my life. Yeah. And I feel like, um, and I'm just curious to, 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 to know your thoughts. A lot of times we associate love with what somebody does for us. Well, and no, it's not. He, it wasn't a materialistic situation. I was, you know, a lot of people don't know I used to dance, you know, mm, back yeah. in the days and here in Atlanta. So it's just like, you know, that's something that he didn't want for me. And he seemed better for me as a woman. So for a man to see like, you know, this is not where you some men would just be like, go be a stripper, go dance. You know what I mean? He took me out of that environment and opened up a business for me and made me better. You know what I mean? So that's what I meant like by change my life. So I felt like that's one of his ways of showing me that he loved me. You know, mm. love is more than just sex or buying me stuff or, you know, spoiling me. It was just, you know, showing me my worth at that time. Mm. But it was also like, anyway, it was just a lot with the situation. You just made this so hard for me because like, <laughs> I don't want to like, no, again, I'm, I'm not saying, trying to talk about him specifically. I mean, we because, can. That's my friend. Like, we're, we're really, we're really good. Like, honestly, I don't have an issue. Me and him talk all the time. We're really good friends. I still have love for him, and that's somebody that I'll never speak down on or for even sure. speak down on. And the I don't, but that's what I'm saying. I don't want to talk about it because the thing is, I have to say, it's outside. It's outside of a person. It's really about the love, right? And, mm-hmm. and again, what I was saying was, I feel like as black people, forget the materialistic things, right? Yeah. We associate what somebody does for us, i.e., right? Like, okay, I don't want you being in the, in the strip club, so I'm a, I'm a provide a life for you, so you don't have to be in there, right? But again, outside of a uh, name. Right outside of a specific name, I feel like the right person can do that at any given time, and that doesn't that's that doesn't necessarily mean love exactly, right? And I feel like a lot of times when you don't, not you, people. I just had a daughter, and I would love to teach my daughter. Like a lot of times, people could present something to you, and it looks like love when that's the farthest thing away from it. But again, mm-hmm. uh, not tying it to what you had specifically, yeah. just specifically for a situation. No, I completely understand what you're saying. I just think that. The situation, like it's yeah, yeah, it's that's why I said like yeah, ah. it's hard to cause yeah, because we got whole, we talking about it. Yeah, yeah, but it's a different. I'm trying to paint a trying to have another conversation outside of that. Yeah. That makes sense. It yeah. makes, am I making sense? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I'm trying, but it's like it's already we said the name, and shit, so it's like fuck it, like whatever. But yeah, do you think do you think that love can be mis mis um absolutely yeah. Mm. Damn, what are some of the telltale signs from your experience? Experiences. Man, talk, bro. I keep telling you this. Like, oh. talk, man. Relax, man. Like, you mean? Just see it. Oh. Oh, she oh. got a coach in the back, y'all. Just like, you know, you know, when you play spades and like you got that person over your corner, your shoulder, like, so, yo. Um, what was the question? Sorry. Can can love be deceiving? Right? Can it look like love? Oh, yeah. Like, okay, yeah. Like, yeah, for sure. I thought somebody like loved me, but they were like using me mm. on a financial level. And um That don't look like love at all. That's <laughs> no, not deceiving. Like no, that looks like, like it wasn't like no, they they the way you you have to like really be there to understand. Like he understood because it was like he was like mind me. Like trying to make me like you're gonna be my wife, like presenting this life that we were gonna create, you mm. know? And um, I was, like, doing things that I'd never done in my life. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, whoa. And before you knew it, I was, like, $70,000 in a hole doing some crazy stuff. So, yeah. And then I, when I look back, I'm like, dang, you never even loved me. Like, mm. you know? So, yeah. You being somebody who loves love, for lack of a better word. Yeah, like, right? I just have a good heart. So I think that, you know, people take advantage of that, you know? Mm. And they take your kindness for weakness. And that was, like, that particular situation. They so took- how do you move differently, though? Well, now, I mean... Mm-hmm. I feel like we do- dive straight in. Hold up, let's rewind. Yeah, How are you like, feeling? Like, is, what's going on? Like, this is a lot. But no, this is this is the conversations I have. Like, so let this me. This is so loud. Right let, nah, that's why I was like, let me rewind real quick. But these are the conversations uh, I have. This is our first time meeting. Yeah. You don't know that, of course. 
How are you feeling? What type of space are you in right now? Like, what's going on? <sighs> um, I'm good. I'm I'm okay. I don't know what I'm feeling. Mm. I don't know. I can't tell you. I'm like in a weird space. I'm, you know, I'm at peace with myself, I would say, but I just think that there's pieces of the puzzle in my life right now I'm trying to figure out. And that's what's, you know, you wake up with different emotions and feelings every day. Um, I'm 29. I do want to, you know, settle down. I do want a husband. I tell mm. my manager that all the time. But it's like you don't want to, like, be forcing things. You know, I think I learned my lesson with past situations, mm. you know. So I don't want to force something just because it looks good or feels good or, you know. I want something that's just real. I, want um, I have a daughter. I'm a single mom. So How old is your daughter now? Five, she's five. five. Um, she's special needs. So mm -hmm. it's not easy, you know, raising my daughter by herself. I do have a good support system. But, you know, you I need, like, a backbone. You know what I'm saying? I could stand on my own. I don't really need a man. But sometimes some people, strong people need people sometimes. Just because no, you're the strongest sure. person doesn't mean you need you don't need somebody. We all need somebody. So mm. I feel like, you know, it will be much easier if I just had somebody to kind of, like, you know, listen, I got this. I'll handle this. I'll do this for you. Like, I don't really have that in my life. And it's like, don't get me wrong. I got that come at me all day, but doesn't mean I'm going to accept it. Mm. You know what I mean? I learned, like, everything that's glitter doesn't go. That's a fact. So it's like, I don't care how much money you got. I don't care who you are. Like, I'm not going to just bring you around me and my, my daughter, you know? Mm. So I'm I just I'm just in a space where I'm just trying to figure out building myself and then figuring out who the right person is for me. I ask you that because um, I just want to, like, paint the pictures because, again, this is our first time meeting, but I want you to understand the platform, what it's about. And um, anything that we talk about, I don't necessarily like to cut anything out, but I will bleep things out. Yeah. So that's fine. That's yeah, cool. we don't need to, you know, bring that. Nah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh -huh. I'm alright with that. Um, yeah. So I do like bleeping it out. We won't cut it out. Just have people for imagination, right? Whatever. Um, but I ask that because I do want to paint a picture of. I want I want the people to see you grow. Yeah. Right. And oh, but sometimes in order to see you grow, we gotta have those uncomfortable conversations and walk down places that like probably hurt. Because it's somebody out there who probably went through a similar thing, going through a similar thing, and they can they can learn from you. Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted to kind of like yeah, you reel it back well. in. Yeah, we can't. We, we we hit the ground running. That's and I'm how like, you got Whoa. the line. You know, yeah, the line like, starts wait, making wait, you. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I mean, I ain't mean to come, but I did want to just explain the the purpose of the platform, so you won't just be thinking I'm trying no, to like. No, you're fine. Fin I'm here. You. Listen, I'm here to you know. Let me, let me ask I you guess this. my therapy session right now. So yeah, see, that's that's what a lot of people say. You'd be surprised. No, I mean, I didn't. You know, I had grown men crying on here. Oh no, I ain't gonna cry now, but. <laughs> <laughs> they don't cry. Okay, cool. All right, man. Yeah, I yeah. mean, I will cry behind closed doors, but I, I don't know. That's fine. That's cool. Yo, yeah. is it hard being Alexa Sky? Absolutely. What's the hardest part about it? Everything, like everything. You know, it's a gift and a curse. Like, mm. I'm blessed. I'm thankful that, you know, I don't want to complain and say, like, why did God give me this life? But it's like, I can't do shit. I go get the mail. They're going to say I'm a mailman. Mm. And I'm talking to the mail guy that psh, Alexis got. Like, doesn't matter what I do. Mm. I get judged for every little thing. If I put on something, I get judged for that. If I'm talking to, I, I was talking to my daughter the other day on live, disciplining yeah, her. It. They were like, I'm yelling at her, and I'm. That's not yelling. That's how I discipline my it's daughter. Discipline. Like, and even if it is, but that's what I'm saying. I, it, they, I see people talk to their kids crazy, and sometimes like we have our moments where you just snap. We all don't, as mothers, do that. But it's my kid. Don't tell me what you know. what I mean, like, so it, just that was a prime example. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to my daughter, and I told her to slow down before she chokes on her food, mm -hmm. and they were attacking me on the shade room mm. for that. You know. So it doesn't matter what I do. I feel like nothing I do can be is good enough for people. Mm. You know, Have you I could do good it and it's still not good. If I do bad, it's bad. You bad. know what I mean? It's, it's just like, it's, yeah. Have you embraced it yet? I don't care. Sometimes I do. But I just learn to just not care. I don't even read comments. I don't care. Fuck mm. these people. Facts. Like honestly, I, like I even told my, like TZ the other day. I was like, I just started back like taking books. I haven't hosted in like a year, mm -hmm. and like. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm about to just host. Like, this is just what I want to do. Like, yes, I was on my spiritual journey. I, you know, I think part of my journey was just like finding, like we said, like finding myself, finding who Alexis was. And I think that was the part that I, people are not understanding. Like, I got closer to God just to like, you know, remove certain things and 
stuff out of my life, but it doesn't mean I had to stop being who Alexis was mm. or is. And I think I allowed like the outside influence to try to create this narrative that I had to be like this holy, godly woman that couldn't do certain things. I still love God and God still loves me and I'm not perfect and he sees it. I still wake up and pray every day. I still go to sleep and pray every day. You know, I, we all sin. We all sin every day. You know what I mean? That's why we're here. But I think that me being in those clubs might help some girls. You know what I'm saying? Like see my transition and my growth. Yeah, I might go host, but I might not be in the club doing what I was doing last year upside down the couch twerking i might be in there just more of a lady you know what i'm saying it's just a way to carry yourself and i think i had to learn how to become and embrace who alexis really is you know mm. and just realize my worth but that doesn't really make me you know i posted a flyer the other day like i'm hosting they was attacking me you know so yeah it's hard being me that was the one thing i noticed that i thought was i just turned the comments off because Guess what? I'm still gonna get my money. That's is, so. That's I was about to say that. I noticed that. I, I looked on your page and I saw all of the flyers. You turned the comments off because not because, but I seen that. And then I seen an a, a, a older interview when you were like first coming into your journey. You were mm -hmm. saying like how you don't want to be in the club. You know. Um, well, I didn't want to be in the club because I used to have a problem with alcohol. Mm -hmm. Because I, you know, I used to drink a lot to cope with my depression. So I used to drink and just, pa you know, pass out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, no, it's not funny, TZ. Like, I used to wake up, like, on the floor, you mm -hmm. know? And I get, I'm an angry drunk. So I want to fight. I start calling people. It was not, it wasn't cute. Mm -hmm. So hostings were, like, triggering me because I was just out. Like, it was just making it worse. It was an excuse to just keep going to get drunk every weekend, you know? So I just really needed a break. It had nothing to do with anything else. But... I just needed a break from that environment. And I took almost a year off. And I'm like, now I'll go to the club. And I, you know, don't get me wrong. Like, I just started back drinking on my birthday, which is July. And probably from July to now, I probably blacked out twice. I have. Cheers to that shit. Yeah. Cheers. I mean, I don't know if we should cheers to no, that or whatever. I mean, no, it's, <laughs> like, I'm whatever. being real. But I've learned self-control. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm proud of myself because I'm able to drink and I'm not just like, blacking out every day. You know what I'm saying? So that was the reason why I stopped hosting, not because it didn't look good. That's what, uh, that's how I got my name. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? From hosting. Like, I host parties. People want to see me. People want to take pictures. There's people that look up to me, so. No, in an in, 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 in interview, it was this lady, Blue Couch, I think. I'm not really sure. But you you said something that was, um that made me think, because you was like, you didn't want to, like, promote it, though. You didn't want to promote liquor and, like, the club to people. And... What I thought was interesting was you were new into your like um your journey. Not new to God, right? Mm -hmm. Let's let's get that straight. You wasn't new to God, but you was new into this. This was like a new journey for you. And I thought it was interesting because we all are kind of like that. But that's good. Like they teach me at church. Like, um, the guys who just start coming to church, like they're the best people to go get other people to come into church because they're the most um, excited, for lack of better words, right? Mm -hmm. And when I seen it, that's the first thing I saw, mm -hmm. right? But again, I'm doing research. Like, I'm I'm looking back, right? So I'm doing research, and I'm seeing you saying these things. But the first thing I think is, like, maybe she's... Is, is she in over our head? Is she ready for... Is is is, is, she's, is she mentally ready for what she's saying she's going to do, right? And then I see you on Instagram uh, a flyer, right? And me, because I'm not, like... I'm not judging you. The first thing I thought was what anybody else would say. Yeah, but I I get it, and that's what we were talking about as a team. Like maybe you know I should have thought about things before I said it, but I was just speaking how I felt at the moment. But my whole thing is my journey was my journey. I think I was just finding who I was, and once I realized that, I'm like I'm not like I said I'm not gonna stop being who I am, but I mm. just changed a lot of my ways. Exactly. But doesn't make God is not going to stop loving me because I'm hosting a club. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I was allowing a lot of that. I was allowing a lot of people in my ear to mm. tell me that I couldn't do this. I couldn't be this. I had to stop doing this in order to live this life. You understand? Yeah. So I was being influenced in that, in that direction. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll stop everything. But even outside of the but influence. But maybe I wasn't though, ready. Yeah, that's what I'm like. That's what I'm saying. Outside of the influence, that's what. Is that what you wanted to answer? No, no. was ready. But, and, but that's okay. We we do that yeah. so so many times. But I tried. We and then that's all as that humans we do that so many times. We're and I'm all, still trying. Right. We're all flawed. We're all sinners. Like you said, that's the reason we're on this earth because of our sin. We're yeah. here because of our sin. Right. So the fact that like, and I was just wondering, how do you make that decision, knowing like you know like the mis I don't want to say the mistakes, but 
that's out there in the public, right? I don't want to do this. And then you decide to do it. I'm pretty sure so many people who are quick to judge you and say what you shouldn't do mm -hmm. or how you are a hypocrite or whatever. I know I'm you say you don't hypocrite. care about people or their opinions, but does that bother you even a little bit? No, like do you, it no. doesn't bother me because I'm human. And at the end of the day, like, what y'all want me to do? Like, mm. I can't, nobody's perfect in this world. Like, some, I would say maybe 1% of me cares. I would say 1%. percent i would be like, okay. Thank you for being honest. Just for being accountable of what I said, you know what I mean? As, like, you know, your word is all you have. Mm -hmm. So I don't want people not to be able to trust certain things that I say. Mm. But it's like, I'm not perfect and no journey. That's why it's called a journey. Right. There's no straight road. So I'm going to, I don't feel like I'm going backwards. I feel like, you know, I'm just being who I truly am. And I'm just letting people know that it's okay. Like, nobody's perfect and God will still continue to love you the same way. And I can still, you know, love God. I still pray and I'm still a Christian. Like, mm. you know. It's, it's the only thing consistent in life is change, right? And things change all the time. What do you say to the young lady, the young lady who might be experiencing the same thing and they might be scared to to go back to clubs, right? She said she she wasn't going to do it, but like, bro, she she made a mistake, right? She she wasn't ready yet. And she's making the she she's on a on a on a fence of like, man, do I do this? I'm gonna look crazy. I don't want people to judge me. Like, what do you say to that well, that girl? I mean, I honestly do what your heart and you know, do what your heart tells you to do. Like at the end of the day, the mind will trick you. Mm. But Everybody's situation is different. I'm a single mom. Mm. You can't, you know, there's no man taking care of me. So people don't know why I have to go do what I need to do. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what it is. Like I, my situation might be different from somebody else's. So it's not really anybody's business why I'm doing X, Y, and Z. I know what I said, but this is my journey and this is the way I'm choosing to be on my journey. And yes, I decided to host and do you know i took a lot i've given up a lot of things i've sacrificed a lot of things on this journey mm. and a lot of personal stuff you know what i'm saying and i feel like i've grown a lot as a woman i'm not the same alexis you know i might have took a step back and yes went back to the club i need to make money mm. i have a daughter to take care of i have food to put on the table i have a lot of people that i take care of so that's not your business until god puts me in a better position and those doors will continue to open then I'll remove that. Until then, I'm gonna do what I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know. What, what do you think was the biggest area of growth in you from um, a, then a to lot, now? Like a lot. Like I, I don't even like. I just know my worth now. Like as a woman, I just you know, I just present myself differently. I carry myself differently. You know, I don't even have the eager. I used to want to be on the internet. Like I used to think just like being half naked was just like it. Mm. You know, would get. You know what I mean? Now I just like dressing up fully clothed and still feel beautiful. I have the confidence and still, you know, embracing my beauty and still be sexy at the same time and still be a mom all at once. Mm. So. And you and you thought at one point it was just like, man, I just got to do I whatever like that's, I got to do. I mean, that's all I knew, you know, like where I came from or what I used my past. Like, that's how I made my money. Mm. That's It was like survive, like, you know. So showing my body was part of how I made my money. Mm. You know, it's funny. Um, we're not funny. It's crazy that you said, like, it's hard being you because of, like you not being able to do things and people not and just having a voice and feeling like they can voice their voice on and opinions about what you're doing, right? That's one particular thing, it being hard being Alexis God. The first thing that came to my mind was the the fact that people are always gonna try to hold you to who they was first met they first met you as. Do you feel like that sometimes? That people try to hold you as the old Alexis God one is like, bro, it's so many well, I'm a different person. My grandma always says not, you know, where you start is where you finish. Mm. So I feel like my past won't define my future. Mm. I know people that, you know, look at, for example, like, look at, I don't know, look at how people started and look where they're at now. Mm. You can't judge nobody. You know? Yeah, I mean, shit, you know look at, I mean? Like, no, I mean, look at Cardi judge, B. She was But on, as I'm saying, but look at Tyler Perry. Like, look at him. Like, he that's was, a great you know example. Like, yeah, Tyler Perry, like, like, he was a homeless living in his car and he's the richest, one of the richest men in Atlanta. Like, you know, you can't judge nobody just because I had a dance host doing this. Three years from now, I might be, you know, a billionaire. Yeah. Oh, and then facts. what y'all going to say? Yeah. What y'all going to say? About, that's what I'm, exactly. Look at Kim. Prime example. So it's like, just be careful how you treat and what you say about people. No, that's a fact. Because the ones that you talk about be the ones that really make it. And honestly, that's what happened to me in school. Like, people used to talk and judge me and bully me. And the same people that bully me in school have to watch me now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I just be careful on how you, like... 
what you say about people. Mm, no, facts. That's you know, crazy. I'm not I'm not the type of person. I don't ju- I don't go on the internet. I don't laugh at people's pain. I don't. I mean, I sometimes I just like okay, she's tripping. But like you know, I even see certain people on the internet. I'm like okay, she never did that. But I'm not about to get under the comments and like down somebody. You know, you just never know what somebody's going comments through. Comments real for sure. Yeah, but you just don't know what somebody's going through, and you don't know like that person could be going through whatever, and then they could wake up and change their whole situation. You know. Mm. No, that makes sense. Oh. Yeah, I, w- I was curious about uh, Love & Hip Hop. You was on Love & Hip Hop for a long time. Yeah. Right? You don't like that? You don't fuck with Love & Hip Hop? No, I do. I mean, I'm thankful. I mean, it was... I, listen, I'm grateful for... I mean, if you don't fuck with them, cool. I don't fuck no, with them. No, I don't not fuck with them. It's just... I mean, hey, I'm, I'm on whatever you want. We here. Yeah. <laughs> we can team mm-hmm. up. No, so... I, I, I don't not fuck with them. I'm, I, like... That was my, you know, past. We're on to newer things now, but you, that was part of my 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 life. When you think of love and hip hop, what do you think now? Well, I just feel like love and hip hop just made a complete fool out of me in a lot of ways, and I'm just that's why when I made that face, you know, I feel like they didn't really like they clowned me in so many different ways. They never really got to show, you know, just even with my story, just different things. My daughter, like they played, they played me for four years, mm. and it wasn't cool. So I just that's all I gotta say. I don't really fuck with it. I ask you that because that seems like it's an ongoing thing with so many women that come on Love and Hip Hop, but it's posed as an opportunity to be successful. It's posed as an opportunity to get your music heard. It's posed as an opportunity for them to know you. And it's like that's never been the case. And and we have so many examples of that not being Yeah, we got Cardi B. Yeah. And maybe I don't know one but everybody other person. Thinks that they can be like it's just not that. Like, I don't know. All I know is with the TV world and with that franchise, you just got to be very careful mm. and you got to know what you signing up for. And what I learned is like the first year I let them basically, you know, I was their puppet. And then last my last season with them, I wasn't playing with them. I was like, look, so I obviously they don't like me. Mm. So I, I caused too much problems for them like because I wasn't trying to like I would deny like wanting to film certain things. But, you know, and then sometimes I felt like I had to film or I wouldn't get paid, you know, so. Understanding that, but let's let's go back, right? Like, not judging, right? Understanding the young lady that you were going into loving hip hop, of course, you think it's an opportunity. You can make money, having fun, whatever the case may be, right? Mm. Fast forward now with everything you learned, right? To the young to the young lady who feel the same exact way. I literally just sat here and talked to somebody, um, and she's literally said, this, "I'm just going on it." Before she got on there, I'm going on there because they're gonna show me my family. I'm like they tell that to everybody, like they literally, lie. they lie. They tell that to everybody now. Look at the storyline, but. Outside of that, mm-hmm. to the young lady who does believe in that, like, yo, I'm going to just go in there. They're going to show me my personality, and I'm going to gain followers and, and gain an influence off of this. What do you tell that young lady? Outside of just forget loving hip-hop. Let's not just, because, again. Like that wants to go on TV and stuff? Reality TV, yeah. I just feel like everything, like I said, everything that's glitter isn't gold. Like, I feel like don't just jump the gun just because you want to be famous. It's mm-hmm. a lot that comes with it, and you got to be prepared for what comes with it. Like, my whole life was exposed. You mm. know, things I didn't even want out got exposed, you know, because of that. And I saw, But I signed up for that. Mm. So I can't blame... Actually, I can't blame Love and Hip Hop because I entered that world, and that's they're doing their job, and I have to do mine. Mm. But it's unfortunate that they put you through certain things because, you know, you see people that go to jail. It's a lot of stuff that... It's a lot of BS, you mm. know? It's a lot of politics. There's a lot of favoritism and... It's just reality, and it's just TV. So you just gotta like know what you're getting yourself into, and just like fame isn't everything. Mm. So I know I'd rather be rich than famous. <laughs> you mm. know what I'm saying? Some people think that's the house that's gonna get ri- how they gonna get rich. No, fame. Let me tell you something. I don't got five point six million dollars. So <laughs> straight up, I'm I got five point six million followers. I don't got five point six million dollars. So followers and fame doesn't mean anything. Mm. Mm. That's crazy because like it's absolutely right, and it's just like it's. I don't, don't want to be that old nigga talking, but it's like you see so many women fall, fall under this trap. They do. They, they clout. Clout is a drug, and it's sickening. Like I, and I'm gonna lie. Like I'm not gonna say I ever wanted clout because I've always been po- like popular my whole life. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Even in school, I was always that girl. You know what I mean? But it's like. So I don't, I've never experienced the whole clout thing, you know what I mean? But I think I did do things for attention mm. at some point in life, like, you know, attention seeking. But the whole, like, wanting to be around and get, get no. Mm. No. Yo, it's crazy. Um, We had, uh, diving more into the serious conversations, right? But we, I seen this, uh, the, the clip of 
Brittany Renner, that's her name, saying like 35 bodies. And she want to take a drink? Can I pull up, man? Fuck. Let me pull up, man. Hey, uh -huh. I, I work hard at this shit, man. I be studying shit, man. What? What uh -huh. you about to say? Speak up, man. Uh -huh. Speak up, what you said? We wanna know what you said. I told you she got, you, when you play spades, that partner on the other man team, you be mad as hell, like, bro, what the hell? But, uh, what you about to say? Go ahead. Speak up, man. <laughs> Nigga, we ain't scared, cause, bro, this is, I told you this ain't Oprah, bro, you can say it. You, we having fun in this motherfucker. Oh, oh, well, she, he, that ain't your, yeah, that ain't your voice, but anyway. I seen um this clip, Brittany Renner, right? And she was talking mm -hmm. about 35 bodies. And like me personally, outside of the thirty-five bodies, I don't really care. Like you're a grown woman. Like me personally, you can call me whatever you Ugh, want. I don't care. What? That's a lot. Too much? No, no. Oh, okay. I was no, wondering. I was nothing. Oh, oh, the look, the. Uh... No, no. <laughs> I was laughing at what you said in my head. Like, what was funny? Share. Nothing. Just continue. Thirty-five bodies a lot. Yeah. Is is it too much? That's listen. That's her. Listen. That's her. Is thirty-five bodies too much? Absolutely. I mean, but. I feel like, okay. Go ahead. I just feel like even if it wasn't too much, why are you telling, like, it's not no, like, you know what I'm saying? Nobody I'm sure people it. got past 35. That's what I'm thinking. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just be real. I, like, but that's not nobody's business. But she might be empowered. This but that's disgusting. And that's like un very, just very not 35 bodies is disgusting or expressing? No, I didn't say the 35 bodies. Saying it. Because... Half of the world probably has more than 35 bodies. Let's be real. That's what I'm saying. I mean, Let's, I'm we ain't going to sit here and act like, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to knock her for, like, like she's just a whore. Like, you know what I'm saying? Which, you know. But she might be a whore, too, but who cares? Yeah, I mean, I'm she, could be, she can be a whore, but I'm I saying. I was a whore, too. I'm just, hey, I just Listen, I don't judge her. nobody. Hey, I'm not judging saying. her. I'm just saying that she can be a, like, just be a quiet whore. Just be quiet. Mm. There's no need to, like. I'm the cover free. Just, but why are you telling the world, like, you know what I'm saying? That's nasty. To me, it was acts. It's fun. Let even if you had a hundred, like even if you had a hundred bodies, that's not nobody's business. And I don't think that's even cute or tasteful for a man to even hear. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like what you do is what you do. Right. No, I get it. Because, like I said, there's people that probably have more bodies than her. So we can't. Who are we to judge, Brittany? Hey. I might not just because I I don't care for her. Like you know, I don't dislike. I don't know her. I just don't care for the things that come out her mouth as a woman. Okay. You know, I don't say I, I can't say I don't like her. I don't care for the things that come out her mouth. Okay. Forget Brittany Renner. Yeah. The, the real no, question. No, I'm just saying I don't like that. Yeah. Forget. It was a time where. Oh. Okay. It's a, it was a time where a particular person cheated on you and had and what? and and Who? and, 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 and Who had cheated on me. Bro, it's Who? it's bro. You think I don't do my damn research? Who? It's all in the fucking. Uh. Who this one? Because. <laughs> Who this one? Who this one? You gotta put a good show. You I ain't for clout. On the fucking shit you said, you was hurt because uh stepped out on you. Oh, and but that was the number one cheater in my life, boy. That boy cheated. That man had babies on me. That's what I'm... Oh, okay, I thought you... Because you oh didn't say... His, you could have just said his name. You Because you said we didn't want to... Oh, okay, don't say his name then. Because somebody help me out. I'm trying to be the respect. I'm, I'm giving you so much respect. Right. And you just over there just trying to... I'm giving you so... Am I tripping? I'm giving her the most respect. Right. The utmost respect. All right. But anyway, it was a time where that happened. And you was yeah. furious at that because, like, I guess the close... You were like, yo, you would never do that. Yeah. But I never then, cheated on him. Ever. For four years. I'm at, I never cheated on that man. It was not But how. you stepped out and then went back home. No, no, sweetheart. I never cheated on him. I was... I was... I was... <laughs> I was a housewife, literally shopping every day. I love While every time I got cheated on, money was in my account and I just shopped. I was really getting mentally abused, like literally, mm. for four years. So imagine the one time I decided to step out. Like, and when I mean step out, it was like I gave myself to somebody else after four years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like, I never cheated, mm. ever. Now, after that, you know. Wait, what? For sure. Yeah. I don't know who that is. I I really don't know these people. I swear oh, to God, bro. Yeah. Like y'all be thinking, like people be thinking, I be being, like, I don't. No, pay. but I never. I know this because of my research, bro. No, no, no. Like, I never. I yeah, but I never um, cheated. He, I, yeah, I never cheated. Okay, because I was gonna ask you, did that like kind of make you think think twice about how things happen? Because like you, like sometimes we could be again. When we could always say what we wouldn't do in but a you situation. You had to think like the person I was dealing with was new. And the, you know, a new upcoming artist. You know how the tour life is. They never, you know, like fame. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of stuff comes with that. The you know the 
jewelry, the money, the girls. You know, you're in a different city. The tour bus, your your boys, his the the guys around him was influencing him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I knew I was getting cheated on. I knew it. You know. And you was just okay with it. I mean, I was in the house. I didn't. I, listen, I was in my eight bedroom house. I was shopping every day. I had a business. At that point, I just had to get smart. I, just, I opened up a spa at 18. Like, I wasn't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, a man's going to do what he want to do. I learned that at that age. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, I couldn't stop him. What am I going to do? Don't cheat on me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can leave. But I loved him. You know what I'm saying? mm Yeah. Well, I'm not going to get into that. This is the thing. At that age, I was very young and naive. I get that. And I felt like I didn't really know what to... Like, I didn't know where I was going to go. I, I was get that. scared. I had just left from like dancing and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Imagine somebody just taking you, putting that. you up. Where am I gonna go? I understand. You know what I mean? I'm I gonna go back to the club. Hell no. No, I get that. I ain't going back to the club. No, I get that. So part. I did what I needed to do, and I experienced what a lot of women are now. You know, exp- I I'm happy I experienced that at an early age because now I'm definitely not like, yeah. But I feel like that's a. And if that I- happens now, just know that that. You know, that but that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like that is an 18. Is but I feel true. like that is an 18 year old thing, though. Like, I mean, you, that is something that you learn at. 18. Like, I'm not here to judge. But like, there's some women that deal with that currently. That are that's dealing with that currently right now. What I went through when I was 18. What do you say to those people? You really want to know? Yeah. Oh. What do you say to those people? You got the first hand experience. You gonna have to pay for the pain and suffering. Mm. Every time that checking account sh- gonna keep shooting up. Wait, he gonna have to pay pay for the pain. Pay for the pain and suffering. <sighs> what? It's the truth. I, I don't. You want to? You want? If you're married or you're in in a re- like, okay, I'm talking about like um, engaged or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not talking about boyfriend girlfriend little play play because okay. you know what I mean. Okay. I was en- I was engaged. Okay. At that age, you know what I mean, like. So I'm saying, like, what you gonna do? Like, a lot, a lot of women don't have. What are they gonna do? Where are they gonna go? Mm. You don't understand. These men kind of like take their independence away. It is important to be independent. You know what I mean? But where are they gonna go? So this is a fire conversation. They gotta right pay here. for the pain and suffering. I, I mean, that, that's the best thing to tell them and figure out which, whatever money he's given, you better try to open up a business or have a plan B mm. and figure some stuff out so you're able. to, You know, if you don't want to deal with it, you can go. Get back but a lot of women don't have a way out. I want you to get back in your uh, your mode like ten minutes ago, right when you was upset. I'm gonna just I'm gonna um, pitch something my idea, and I want I want to know like what? why am I wrong with that? What? So my first idea when you say that, I'm like, yo, the, the money can't even be worth the 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 shit you're going through. Like for me, because again, I'm not a woman. I, I haven't gone through that. I don't understand, right? Clearly, you 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 are able to understand it to a d- deeper connection, and I think that's dope. Yeah, yeah, But enlighten yeah. me, like, cause for me, it's like, yo, that's dumb. Like, why would a woman stay with a man who's cheating, even though he's giving her money? That don't make no sense. No, I'm saying like, okay, I'm, I'm saying like for the deeper situations, like people that are married, you can't just up and go. Divorces aren't cheap. Can you know what I mean? It takes a process. So I just said at that point, a lot of people stay married, and you know why, right? Cause. It's you know, cheaper the cheaper. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know that saying, right? So think about on the woman's side, like a woman's just gonna stay because why? The money. Mm. The kids. You know, do you think she's gonna just go, what's she gonna do? So is that worth your 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 heart? No, it's not. I don't think so, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Like a lot of people that's why I said with marriage, some people are marrying for love, some people marry for money. Mm. Unfortunately, that's how life is. People marry because they are truly in love with the person, and people some people are married because of financial wealth. Bro, that's that's like heartbreaking. Like about to get married, like just under hearing that and like. And you can still love the person though, but through all of the heartbreak, through all of the cheating, all of the treating you bad, you still can love somebody. Wait, what? Through all of the heartbreak. Yeah. Through all of the cheating. Do still all of, love them. You can still love that person. You saying? Yeah, you, I still love them, but you mean like still stay? Both. I mean, I probably. I mean, at that point, I'd probably be doing me too. What's the point of being there? Yeah, like, you have to understand, like, marriage. I'm talking about married people. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, like, I I see it today. I see it happen, like, in front. I see it happen every day. I watch people, I watch married men, and I watch married women that are out here really, like, it's just, 
how society is. I'm not saying like I'm unfortunately I'm not in no situations. I'm not married, so I don't. Yeah, we just I don't talking know, about it. I don't know how I would react. I'm just saying like what I see, you know, happens. Mm. They stay because their husband is paying for their pain and suffering, or they're taking care of the lifestyle, or their kids, or they're put up so they feel like. And I'm sure they're empty and broken in the inside. I'm very sure. Do they deserve that? Absolutely not. But mm. it's just how things are. That's crazy. That's how society has made marriage become. That's mm. why I had asked you in the beginning, like, like, wow, you're right, you're right, you know? And you were very confident about your marriage, and you don't see that too much because these men walk around here, oh, I'm married, my wife this, my wife that. Yeah, nigga, real right. My wife this, and you be right there tricking on your uh, on the next girl. It's not crazy if you got a plan. He said, um, it's not crazy if you got a plan. What's your name again? I'm sorry, bro. CC is here. He said it's not crazy if you got a plan because they not going to hear. Um, now, I hear you. It, it's just unfortunate because I don't know. Like I just feel like you shouldn't go through that no matter what. Like, I feel like a lot of times people put money over everything. Like They put money over themselves. They put money over like what they got inside. And they really empty because they put money over everything. And I feel like if you don't stand for something, you'll die for anything. So like if I can pay you to cheat on you and this great and... and, and and disrespects you. I can no, I'm not saying I agree. I'm just saying it happens. I feel you, but I yeah, asked you yeah. what was your advice, but you said make sure you get paid for pain and suffering. That was your advice to the woman that's going through it. That's what your advice was. Yeah, or just leave. That's the only thing, two things I could say. Because the only reason why I'm saying that is because realistically, what woman really just goes? Mm. Like, I'm a woman. I, like, these women, they say they're going to leave and they still stay because the men break them down. Mm. They break them to where they need them. You know what I'm saying? Realistically, what women do you see just up and go? I do see some women get the fuck on, you know, and just go. But nine out of ten times, it's like a mental thing. I feel like I see more women get up and go than men for sure. I don't. No? I see a lot of women just, I I have friends, like not friends, I have associates that yeah. I see go through it. So it's like I'm speaking from what I see and they'll you'll just be like, why are you still there? And they'll stay around. So at that point, it's like you're going to stay around and get cheated on and be looking stupid or are you going to... Or are you going to tell him, like, all right, you want to cheat? Go let him do what he want to do, but go open up, go get some investment properties. Go flip this some money. Go So then you could be straight. And then mm. when you're ready to leave, you're, you can leave with something. Because half of them don't have nothing to really leave with. Mm. So that's why they stay. That's why it's important to have your own, too. But when you marry, like I said, some people marry for wealth. They don't marry because of love or they got their own stuff going on. Some women marry because, oh, this man's going to take care of me. And it's just how it is nowadays. Mm. No, so when crazy. you don't have nothing, you kind of deal with those things. Now I'm glad you were able to articulate that. That's in what a way. I meant. Like, no, by, that's fine. That's what I meant. Like, but part of pain, the pain and suffering. Like, don't just sit around and be an idiot and be a doormat either. So you think it's like, like because I'm married to this man, it's okay for him to be out with this girl, this girl, this girl, and I'm supposed to sit here and just like, okay, no. Mm. Mm -mm. I think I don't know. I just think infidelity is the one when we talk about marriage, right? I think that's the one. That's the it's one wrong. reason you can leave in marriage. When we talk about God and the Bible, that's the one reason why you can divorce and it's leave. It's wrong. It's 100% wrong. Mm. But we got to understand the the work. We can, what's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. But in this generation, what we've created in this society, it's messed up. This whole yeah. world, the whole the social media, all this stuff has messed up what marriage really is supposed to be and what relationships are really supposed to be. Mm. Like these things don't really last or exist no more. Yeah, it's harder. Know. It's very hard. It is. No, out here sure. in these streets. It's hard. It is. Social media, you know what I'm saying? Everything. It, everything people think we, we have so much access and we really don't. You know what I'm saying? Like people think just because you can see a fat ass or a pretty face on Instagram, like, bro, I can get that. Or I can sit next to somebody. It's like, I don't know. I just feel like I never, I don't know. I just never like believed in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like what makes you different is what makes you special. Right, so the fact that I can sit next to I don't know a beautiful woman that might got everything going on and still understand that I got a woman at home. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what make me special. Like and like I feel like I wish a lot of people, I wish other people would see that in themselves. Because a lot of people like they fall short of temptation. Temptation is real though. Temptation. Let's not, is... let's not get it fucked up, right? Temptation is real, and I understand that, right? And I'm not. I would never I cast judgment. Though. You know what I'm saying? But like that self, that self control is what make you stand out. Like, that consistency in your work is what make you stand and out. self-control is super big, and nah, that's good that facts. you have that. That's nah. why, I, But that's why I noticed that from you when I first sat down with you. I said, wow, because you were very confident in when I said, wow, are you, you know, are oh, you ready for marriage? For sure. You were confident in your answer. And as I said, you don't hear that a lot from, that's why I said you don't hear that from a lot of black men nowadays. Mm. Because 
I know married men that are out here just acting a fool and cutting Having up. Their way. Just cutting up. It's tempting. And they're my friends. For like, sure, but. And I just, it is, it's kind of like, you know, it's okay. sad to see, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you this. How important is it to, to choose the right part, person? It's very important because even hanging around these guys that I know that are married, like, you know, and like I said, these are my homeboys, like my brothers. And I was like, damn, like that could be me. Mm. So it kind of scares you a little bit, mm. you know? And Like, dang, like, and he got, you know, he's like well put together businessman. You know what I mean? Very successful, but it doesn't matter. It could be. I don't think it really matters. Mm. I feel like if man is not ready, he's not ready. Do you think a lot of things change your mind? Ha Another hard question. I'm sorry. Mm. A lot of things change your perspective or how you think about things. Having a daughter and having like an absent father, for lack of better words. Yeah, Did absolutely. Mm. Yeah, like it's, I raised her by myself. So any man that I bring in this around her, for sure, like. It makes you look at things differently. Going everything, forward. yeah, everything. Mm. Mm -hmm. Do you think you needed that? Yeah, I think that's why God gave me a daughter mm. to, you know, slow me down in a lot of different ways and to make sure, you know. So you know, I think He does everything for a reason. I don't, I don't question. Sometimes I question, like, well, why did all this happen? But you know, I don't know if it was meant for me to have a baby and then have a family right away. I think it was, you know, my daughter was here to help make me stronger and mold me. It's the woman I need to be, so I don't think it was meant for me to just automatically. You know, some people just have a baby and get married, like, no. Mm. How much did that mean to you, like, just to be that independent? A lot. Um, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. How hard is that to even, like, we talk about your daughter, you talking about uh, special needs. Like, how hard is that, like, to even? Mm, I mean, she, my daughter's strong. She's, you know, she's a fighter. I'm blessed that, you know, it's not like I, there's a lot of other special needs um, parents out there that I know probably have it a little bit harder than I do. I know my daughter is very fortunate and blessed to, you know, they told me she was going to do a lot of things and she's beating all the odds. So I'm thankful and I'm God, grateful you. for those for things. Sure. And, um, you know, it's still bits and cha it's challenges with like certain stuff. Um, and I have a support system and I just think that, you know, just got to stay strong and continue to just like be the best mom I could be. Mm. What's the hardest part you think? Um, Patience. <laughs> my patience be like running low sometimes, but she teaches me how to have them because mm. she's so innocent. So it's like even when I'm angry, it's like two minutes later, it's like I can't even be, you know what I mean? She's so like an innocent soul. She doesn't mean no harm. She, you know. Yo, I, you know, it's So funny. it's just like when you look at her, it's like, oh, okay. Nah, facts. Like my mom was a single parent, right? And like growing up, I always had this like, this respect for like single mothers mm -hmm. because like that's all I knew. Like my mom, we had to, we went through some shit. Like some shit, you feel me? And like, I think now I got a two and a half month old, right? Mm. And um, just understanding the dynamic and both of us are there, right? Like mm. we both live in the house and it's hard as hell, right? Yeah. And I just thought like, yo, imagine what my mom's had to go through just having her Just by, seeing it like, yeah. By herself. What? Yeah. And I was wondering like, man, just being a, a single parent, Raising, like, when she crying, you don't have nobody to pass off to. You can't just take a... No, I had a good... I had my mom and my grandma there, mm. but I didn't have a, a man there. Mm. It was all women, so I'm thankful that I had, like, the womanhood. Like, mm. the beginning part, even till now, I still have a little bit of help. You know? mm. No, that's hard, But I'm man. still a single mom. No, nah, facts. And you're doing, you're doing a lot of things now that um I think you was you were doing something for, like, the uh, program. Uh, I'm sorry. You was... A movement you was pushing for what? some businesses you got for her yeah or um what her company yeah she has a like a hair company like hair drops. No, I thought she was doing something else. It was like uh for the uh oh, I can't remember. I have a lot of like women communities, so maybe like, I don't remember like girls don't, in charge, don't like marketing. I'm yeah. not even gonna lie. I don't okay. Remember. I don't know. I know because you had a couple minutes. You had the one where you was doing like out of Airbnb. You got kicked out of it, right? <laughs> no? Oh, my bad. Too much information? I got kicked out of no, yeah, that. They, they was snitching on you because you was doing like, you had like people that got surgeries. You were taking Oh, my recovery house. On, that bro. wasn't like, Airbnb. I mean, you had it in a minute. Halfway house, they kicked you out because no. you <laughs> we gave it up or something. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> like, she making it like, I don't know nothing. No, because, like, no. Um, no, that's not what happened, actually. So they weren't snitching on you. People was calling. They was mm -hmm. call, they was calling. Uh, 
the people on you and shit? No, yeah, I didn't have my license. Oh yeah. So I was in Egypt and then they um shut my house down. The state did. So yeah. Cause them people snitched on you. No. One of it was a it was an inside job with somebody that was working with me. So it was somebody hating on me and they try to like did they do what they need to do? They shut the business down. Yeah. Fuck them niggas, fuck you. What else you got going on? What else what's else going on? I'm sorry. <laughs> Businesses, talk to me. Come on. Um <laughs> So right now, um, I have a community that I'm working on. It's hot called Shit. It is hot. What the fuck? I'm um, sorry, y'all gonna have to hear this shit. I'm sorry. My bad. Go ahead. <laughs> Damn. What? Um. Yeah, angle your mic to your. Mic. It's hot as a mother. Y'all not hot. Like, you got a fucking jacket on. He got hoodies and shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> God damn. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um. You yeah, you just. Shit. Yeah, you just like. Hold on. I need a second. Take your time. Take your time. Yeah. Shit. You want some more wine? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> you little Smith. Yeah. You're not Smith. <laughs> Nasty ass wine. <laughs> That's probably why she Smith, because that shit wasn't it is, good. It is not good. It's hot as shit in here. Why is it when it's hot, I want to drink more? Oh. Go ahead. You um, got businesses going yeah. on right now. I'm sorry. I apologize. Come on. Yeah, so um, I have a woman community right now. for um, It's called Rich Girl Society. So it's basically for moms and just women that want to make passive income. So I have like Airbnb and you know, it's like a community to help fix your credit. So even if you don't have the money to help you start, no, I'm good. Um, to help you with like business funding so you can, you know, get your own Airbnb and stuff. So I'm starting that. Um, I got a couple, you know, movies I'm about to do, filming, okay. working on a show. Big movie star. Yeah. What, what, what show is going, it's going, it's not going to be on Tubi, is it? No, I don't know yet. We're working on some stuff, so. Even if it be on Tubi, it's on. No, I'm saying I'm about to work on some. I'm joking. Oh, I think it actually is going to be on Tubi, right? Damn. Shit. It was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I actually had to re. <laughs> Shit. It's a joke, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be on Tubi. Well. Oh, I'm hot as shit, bro. I'm sorry. It's hot. So we <laughs> There's some good movies on Tubi, bro. They, be, they have you go down a rabbit hole, bro. <laughs> Um, oh, the Tubi original. Put some respect on me. What was the other Tubi? Wait, what? I don't know the difference. I thought it was a Tubi. I don't have Tubi at all, so. Oh, so it's like a Netflix. So it don't be on Tubi. So it's Tubi. Like the shit for, from the, the other girl that was on Love and Hip Hop with uh, with Omarion, right? What was that movie? What movie was that? I forgot. Whatever. But yeah, you got movies coming out. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. So um, excuse the ignorance, man. It's hot shit. That here. was that. Uh, <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> she can't joke with us, bro. She ain't feeling. I could joke. Hold on, my eyes is watering a little bit. Okay. Um. What else? I have so much going on. Okay, so yeah. Then I have this girls in charge group. I have a business partner, so we have a woman in marketing group. So we take trips um, with different girls and help them with business funding. Mm. So we just left Tulum. Um, I have like my her and healing group, Bible study group on Wednesday night. So we do Bible study. What's the last time you studied at Bible study? On Wednesday. What's the last thing you studied at Bible study? True. Actually, it was yesterday. It was yesterday. It was a deep conversation. We were always talking about voodoo and stuff. and Voodoo and mm -hmm. Bible study? Yeah, because it was just like a deep conversation. We were talking about in the Bible basically like how, you know, they were talking about a lot of sacrificing and like animals in the Bible. So my question was why... In the Old Testament. Yeah, so what we were reading, and I'm, I'm like, so I had a question. I'm like, I have a question like why... Back then, like in the Bible, they keep talking about sacrificing all these animals. But nowadays, when you say something about sacrificing, they think you're doing voodoo or it's considered a ritual or something. But that's what they were doing then. So it was a deep question. So it got into like a whole thing. And then pretty much the answer was pretty much because like they were sacrificing to God and not to another power. Like, you know how mm -hmm. in Atlanta you have like different religions here. People do like and all these things. Wait, what? Like, you know, like, what's going on in law? No, I don't know. I'm saying, like, and then you have, like, people that, like, uh, psychic readers. Like, there's different people that people go pay. There's different people that they pay, mm -hmm. which is considered their gods, you know? So it's a difference. So that's why I was asking, because we were reading about sacrificing, and I'm like, all this sacrificing stuff in the Bible, 
what's the difference between now? People mm. doing sacrifices now. It was a deep question. So what's okay. the best part of your like your spiritual journey right now? Like what's the most interesting part? Um, Not even best. What's the most interesting? Like the I mean like it might caught you off guard. I just feel like in the beginning part. Mm. When I had like, you know, in the beginning, just the encounterment. Church is scary as hell. Well, it's not even so much church. It was more so just when I had my moment with God, you know, and you know, it's a personal moment that I talked to him. And once you feel him and you receive him, that's just what it is. Mm. And I've always been a believer and, you know, I don't, everybody has their own beliefs, but once you just accept and believe, you know, mm. and I think that in hard times, it's super important to just pray. Mm. So. No, nah, facts. But, yeah. well, I appreciate you. I ain't gonna hold you up, man. This is fun. I, um, glad we got a chance to sit down and talk. You're definitely interesting, and um, your story is dope. Uh, I didn't touch on all the things I want to touch on because I feel like it wasn't the time. But you know, anything else you want to ask me before I, I get off? I mean, I got a list of things. No, you could just ask me one one good question. What, bro? You ask me anything else? Let me no, check. I'm gonna look. get. I'm. A, I, we're gonna have a hot question, and I answer it. I don't, I'm not good at hot questions. No, just I'm in the hot seat for one minute. So ask me anything you want to ask me. And then I want to. I did want to talk to you about. um. Anything you want to ask me. Nah, because all my questions are serious. I try to make it light, but all my questions are like super serious. I wanted to have it's a okay, deep conversation with you. Away. You told her? Okay. Like, I wanted to talk about like the. um. The like the human trafficking thing you went through. Okay. Like I told you, all my questions are super deep. That's fine. I mean, it's not my first rodeo talking about it. I saw you talk about it a couple times. Yeah. I feel like, again, that was another thing that Love and Hip Hop tried to, like... Yeah, play with... Play. Like, they... Because, I, like, I seen when you first talked about it, right? Yeah. I think you was like... What was interesting to me, because you, you posted it on Instagram, and you was like, don't ask me. Wait till the episode will come out to see what was going on. And honestly, but that made me cringe. But that's what they told me to do. I believe you. That, that was what, like... You know, imagine somebody like it was the first time ever speaking about it, and then they were like, "Oh, we're gonna give you opportunity to on this platform to talk about what happened," and then like that's what I was told to post, mm. and then they made a whole complete like, you know, mm. joke about my like what really you know something serious. But it's fine because like now I have other I've had other opportunities to speak on it. You know, mm. I just did a revolt summit about um, you know, black girls missing and stuff. So. It was super big, and I, I was glad I was able to be a voice there because I didn't realize how many girls are missing nowadays, and it's like, you know, it happened to me, you know? So, and it happens in all different ways, and for me to be, you know, to use my platform and bring awareness is super important. How does that happen? Um, It could happen anyway. You know, for me, my situation was friends, you know, hanging around the wrong people. I got caught up in the wrong crowd, and I was at a young, you know, so no, I I want to know details. My um, if you don't mind, my my st my daughter, my daughter. I have another daughter who's fourteen, and like she's in high school now. Mm -hmm. She's a freshman. Um, some of her friends be talking about the podcast and stuff like that. So like, for you and that moment, like, how does that happen? How do you see some telltale signs that you can stay away from? If you're okay um, with sharing. Well, <laughs> then and now is completely. Well, it's not that far apart, but it is a gap. Um, I just feel like now, like, the generation of the girls are a little more grown and faster, so I just feel like they just need to be careful with the people they're hanging around and the guys that they're talking to. Just be careful. Mm. It, it starts with, you know, the environment, to mm. be honest. Like, I think I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, hanging around the wrong people, and I got led into that environment mm. where I couldn't get out, you know? Um, kidnapping is something... You can't really, you know, that's something I don't know. Like being at a store and somebody just snatching you, it's, that didn't happen to me, you know? Like I was led somewhere and I was held hostage, which is still a form of kidnapping, but it's mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't really, I, like that when I was at the Revolt Summer, I didn't know how to like really answer those questions because I, I don't know how to prevent that and I want to know and I want to learn. Mm -hmm. But I think just, you know, also not going to the gas, like me, I don't, like I try not to go to the gas station or go places by myself. Like when people see a woman by themselves late nights, it's not really safe. Mm. Those are the times that you can get snatched and you know. Yeah, no, I get it. And like for girls that are 15, 16, they might go to a friend's house or and getting in Ubers, things like that. I would think as like a parent, don't allow you, you know, pick your kid up. Mm -hmm. Don't let them get in a car. You know, you might feel like lazy, not want to go get them. No, because mm. it might be an Uber driver, you know. Mm. So.
for the woman who been through that, because I think before that, before you shared, you didn't never speak about it. Of course, before you shared, you never spoke about it. Before that instance on Love and Hip Hop, you never spoke about it, right? Mm-hmm. To the woman out there who who who's been gone through that, who's been kidnapped, human trafficked, and um, are scared to speak about it for whatever reason it is. How they how do they get the confidence to speak up on those situations? I mean, you gotta speak your truth, to set yourself free. That's mm-hmm. the best thing, cause. That's part of, you know, a lot of damage. It damaged me a lot uh, through my whole life. And, you know, I'm still healing from it. I mean, I, I'm still healing. I don't think you ever really heal. People could say, like, oh, I'm healed. But in reality, you're not because it's, it's not so much trauma that happened that it's always going to replay in my head, even with relationships and things like triggers, um, red flag. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, th- you know, abuse and like, you know, so for girls that get into like abusive, you know, those things will forever follow you. So it's just like, just speak and just set yourself free. Go to go to therapy. I never did therapy. So I think talking to somebody might help. Um, therapy is fire. Therapy is big. And I therapy probably think I should go see a therapist now still. You know, I think maybe if I go sit with a therapist, maybe for like 90 days and just like let everything out. You know, it might be different versus, you know, I could talk to my close friends and stuff, but just talking to somebody that doesn't know you, you mm. know? So I, I want to try it. I just never had the courage to do it. So I think talking to a therapist and um, just being, not being afraid to just, you know, walk in your truth and it, I happens, to, it happens to all of us. No, you're right. I think proximity is super important, right? Because even if, even if you don't have a therapist, if you're talking to close friends, they will encourage you to speak out, right? And the more people will encourage you to speak out, the more you feel safe and the more you feel strong. That's where you get your power from, from your close circle. So, like, yeah. yeah like, and you don't know who you, like, you're helping, like, you mm, know? No, nah, facts. Yo, again, I appreciate you for pulling up, man. Thanks. Sorry we had, like, a lot of messy topics, but, like, I was trying to get to know you. Messy. What? There were some messy questions. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah. So, thank you for answering everything. We had fun. Uh, you sure you want to have a drink? No, I'm good. Alexis Sky, everybody. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. You don't have nothing in there to toast about. It's fun. Cheers. It's hot as shit.